Hi, folks. Good to have you <laughs> with us great. today. We are kind of running hands-on. I have a couple of computers in front of me. Pastor Dave is not with me. He's uh, He is still recouping, and I can't blame him. We had a pastor's meeting this morning, great time of prayer. And uh, so he is home resting. He has a board meeting tonight, so I didn't want him to overdo it today. He's He is still recovering, doing much better, but he's... He's still recovering. So we are in our study of Daniel. This might be the last week. We'll see. We have five questions. So I know. We can do it. Who knows what can happen? <laughs> no rabbit five, trails. Five questions. <laughs> no. But we're glad you can join us today. Oops. And uh, I, uh, Pam, I, maybe you're listening today. It's good to have you with mm -hmm. us. And we're finishing up the book of Daniel today, and then we're going into a study in Bible prophecy. And if you do not have that study, you can call the church. Um, let me see, 466-6093. I had to think about that for a minute. 440-466-6093. Uh, Give us your name and address if we're not here. Uh, and we'll let, let us know that you want the new Bible study, Bible prophecy, and we'll, we'll mail it to you. And uh, I would tell you what our email address, but I think it's New Life <laughs> I don't know. Ohio. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, at gmail.com. Uh, or maybe it's New Life Geneva. <laughs> oh, sure. don't, don't. Gonna... So anyways, uh, yeah, yeah. maybe we'll find it before we finish today. But I definitely know you can call the church at 440-466-6093. Just tell us who you are and your address and that you want the new Bible study and we'll, we'll mail it out to you. So as we get started today. New uh, Life Ohio at okay. gmail.com. Oh, there you go. New Life Ohio at, at gmail.com. Gmail yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> our Gmail up. address. <laughs> our our website is uh, newlifegeneva.com. That's why it's kind of messing with us. We've still yet to get that figured out. <laughs> so as you're joining us today, uh, we're excited to uh, just see what God is speaking through the book of Daniel towards the end of this 12th chapter and uh, just to be available to the Lord. I, I tell you, I, my, my heart, I've been praying the uh, 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 revival that's happening at the university in Kentucky, what is it, Ashbury, mm -hmm. um, has been going on. Our son Joe went there last Friday and was there Saturday uh, for part of it and then came back. And uh, they're now moving it off campus to a, a larger facility. They Last weekend, they had over 20,000 people uh, come to that. And uh, it is now spreading to other universities. Uh, I've read of at least five or six other universities where they're accommodating the revival. And my prayer has been, God, visit every college and university in the United States and really around the world where there have been atheists and humanists and uh, people who, who disavow God and who have um, swept the hearts of young people away for, for uh, basically, a, a, I'd say, a couple of decades, if not longer. Uh, maybe a generation of people have been turned uh, from the Lord because of the... Um, thought of uh, in, um, education being a God rather than God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. And so I'm excited that uh, hopefully this thing will spread, that there'll be supernatural signs and wonders. Uh, let me tell you a quick story that I know God can do things. Uh, we, we knew of a man named Colton Rickamaratney who was from Sri Lanka. And Colton decided to come to the United States because he felt God told him to come. And as he came, he um, had an opportunity. He was invited to come and speak at a, 
a, a university in their philosophy department. And uh, Colton was more than willing to go. And he went. And uh, the professor really invited him as more of an oddity than anything. Uh, Colton was spirit-filled, led of the Holy Spirit, moved in um, uh, gifts of the Spirit. And as he went into the class, the, the professor there basically said, today, students, we have a, a, a religious man who's here to tell us about his religion. And uh, Colton was introduced. Colton got up and started to share and um, and it was good what he shared. Well, the thing is, is when when Colton was done, the professor said, "Well, thank you, Mr. Ricka Maratney, uh, for coming and sharing. And uh, we are a philosophy class, and we don't really believe in one religion over another. And you know, religions are made by man, that type of thing. And and really trying to belittle Colton's relationship with the Lord." And Colton was was standing there and saying, Lord, give me something, give me something. And so Colton did. He, uh, he heard from the Lord and, and he said, Professor, I have one question to ask you. And the professor said, uh, sure, what is it? And Colton said, if there is no God, then why did he show me that you spilled a cup of coffee on your pants and you had to change it this morning before coming to class? And the professor was like, what? Nobody was there but my wife and I. And then Colton said, and also the Lord has shown me that you have a loaded shotgun in your front closet. And and the professor went, nobody knows, not even my wife knows about that. And, and it opened up an opportunity for Colton to share with the whole class because of the supernatural signs and wonders that took place. And I'm praying that our universities will see supernatural signs and wonders. They're, they're unexplainable, that students and staff will move in the gifts of the Spirit in a supernatural way that will cause people to say, how could that be? How can anybody know about that? And uh, it, will, it will draw people and stir people. I, I'm praying for our universities and colleges that this will be a place for revival to to, to come and, and just overflow uh, into our communities. Folks, wouldn't it be great if we saw a revival at Kent State Branch in Ashtabula? Wouldn't it be amazing to see uh, Lakeland Community College and uh, Cleveland Community College um, just have a, a, a breakout of revival of people coming and gathering and praying and worshiping? How amazing that could be and would be if, if that takes place. So we need to be praying that way, that this will spread. Um, I was reading an article by uh, one of the Kendrick brothers who has gone to this, and he says that there's no showmanship, there's no um, uh, agenda, uh, there's not, a, not a, a professionalism about it. It's just hungry students coming together and praying and asking for forgiveness and being broken before the Lord. And I, I think, boy, that is so exciting. My wife and I had the privilege of going down to Columbus uh, during the Brownsville revival, and the pastor of the church uh, that was in, in Brownsville had come up to Columbus, and we had a, a Friday and Saturday meeting. And uh, the Spirit of God was there in such an amazing way. John Kilpatrick, that was the pastor. And we came in late on Friday, and we, we were ushered up to front row seats <laughs> in the front because that's all the room they had left. And, uh, and, and God moved. And, and then we came back on Saturday at uh, noon. Mm -hmm. We came back at noon, and they started the service and, and just allowed the Holy Spirit to move through the songs. And, and, uh, and we were there, and then people began to cry out to God and stand up and ask for forgiveness. And there'd be another song and this and that. And, and finally, John Kilpatrick got up and he shared, and it was amazing just the things that God was giving him to share. And then he said, folks, we've been here a while. It's probably time for us to close this down. And I looked at my watch, and we were there from noon until 7 o'clock that night. 
and there was never once a need to use the bathroom to get a drink of water. And and that wasn't just for us. That was for everybody that was in that auditorium. I didn't see anybody get up and move around and go someplace because of this, that, or the other. It was amazing. For seven hours, we were in the presence of God. There was a guy who was doing sign language uh, for the deaf people, and he got slain in the spirit probably three, two or three times. He would be signing, all of a sudden he'd just kind of go over, and there, somebody else would, would get into his seat and, and continue the sign language till he finally would crawl up into the chair and kind of came, gain his composure. It was amazing what God was doing in that uh, that time. It, it was. It did not seem like seven hours, did it? It probably felt like an hour and a half, two hours that we were there. And when we looked at our watch, it was like, what? Seven o'clock? And, uh, and we were a part of other things that God was doing during that time frame back in the middle 90s. Well, we were also a part in the 70s yeah. of the revival that the was going revival on. Revival in the 70s, uh, the Young People Revival which the charismatic movement really started that at a university, folks. Uh, they met with God, and it spread throughout the United States and was called the charismatic movement, where the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit went into mainline denominations. It was amazing uh, what God was doing. I, I got saved in 73, and the church I ended up in in Hawaii, um, whenever the doors were open, it was packed with people, young people especially, a lot of surfers. Um, on a Sunday morning, you'd go to church and there would be surfboards leaned up against the, the side of the church, um, stacked up like kindling wood, uh, and young people coming in in bathing suits and t-shirts and swim shorts and things like that and getting saved. And God was doing amazing things. There was one kid that got saved. He had been very rebellious, got saved and was willing to just honor his mom and dad and went home and told his dad, Dad, I've been disobedient. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And I'm, I'm just going to listen to whatever you tell me to do. And the father got so convicted, he came and talked to the pastors and said, my son came to me and he said, Dad, I'll follow you and obey your instructions. And the father said, I need help just knowing what to tell him <laughs> because he was so convicted. So God was on the move then, and I'm praying that he's doing the same thing today where young hearts are being stirred and turned over to him. And we as God's people, we've been in the church for a while. We have a choice, and I've said this before. We can either be spear throwers like King Saul throwing a spear at young David, or we can be like the prophet Daniel and anoint and bless that young generation and say, Samuel, God, what did I say? Daniel. Oh, Daniel. Sam, Samuel, <laughs> the prophet Daniel. Samuel, uh, where he anointed David as as the king and blessed him and encouraged him. And I believe that the old gener generation, the one that we're in right now, is the generation that needs to encourage and inspire and help provoke the things of the Spirit in the younger generation as they're hungry and seeking God's, God's direction and his wisdom. Well... You got something you want to yeah. share? Okay. <laughs> Add on. <laughs> so um, I was, you know, thinking about this. And months before this even happened, I was, um, the Lord and I were just talking. And he was telling me that, you know, I'm going to do a new thing. And it's not going to be um, <clears throat> like the others. It's not going to follow the same patterns as the other uh, revivals and and things because he said I want this this is going to be an ongoing thing it's it's going to continue it's not going to stop and what happens is it it's because it's going to go into the homes and you're going to have change changed lives that um, maybe they have just had a taste of this revival or not even been a part but it's been brought to them that it, it it just transforms and changes them and i was reading this um one of the persons were uh on facebook had put something on uh about the revival and i thought this is really good um i wanted to read it because it, it really um embodies what i think the holy spirit was telling me because too many times we try to put the Holy Spirit in a box and say, well, you did it this way that time, so you're going to do it that way again. And he said, no, don't put me in a box. And, and at times when we do that also, we're quenching the Spirit. 
which he says, it says quench not the spirit. And so we need to allow the Holy Spirit to let it um, grow as he's leading it and as he's wanting to do and not to put our hands and try to uh, taint what he's he's going to do and just let him move it through and and he'll he'll bring different ones he'll he'll reveal to different ones the way it it needs to continue and needs to move anyway this person said i imagine by now many of you have heard about the renewal taking place at asbury campus i am amazed at how many how campus officials are stewarding this sovereign outpouring of god's spirit there um timothy tennant who is the president there said uh, in a blog, this is the reason why both the university and the seminary have not canceled classes. It is not because we are in a business as usual mode, far from it. There is talk of little else in every chapel, in every classroom, in every hallway conversation, and I suspect in every home and apartment in the community. The desire is to mainstream renewal into the very fabric of our lives so that we are transformed right where we live, work, and study. And that was part of what, you know, God was speaking to me. I, I'm doing a transformation. So it, it's not this, we've had too many revivals. Special as, event. Yeah, events. It's and he lifestyle. says, no, this is a change in you that's going to continue and just keep moving. It's not going to be this one-time thing, but a lifetime thing. Yeah. And... um he says, we all love mountaintop experiences, but we also know that it must be lived out in all the normal rhythms of life. We have to live into this desperation for God to do what we cannot do. We have to live into transformed relationships. We have to live into new patterns of life and worship. In short, we must embrace what it means to live as Christians in the midst of a church culture which has largely domesticated the gospel beyond re recognition. I thought that was really good. My response, wow, the world is not moved by what may or may not be happening behind church door doors, cynical at best, but what will happen when they see it firsthand in the workplace and witness our daily lives lived right in front of them? Amid an ever-darkening culture and horrifying news reports, let us be living witnesses of light, stability, peace, and God's love. Let us walk it out where it must be seen. A desperate and dying world is waiting to see it where it counts most. And that's what he's doing. Yeah. And, and, and so I think it's just going to, you know, just spread. Because it, it's not limited to walls or to a place or um, a specific uh, time at a place but this is this is going out to uh, you, you can't limit the Holy Spirit you can't stop his ability to to move and and um, go into areas that we think are impossible for him to reach no he's going to reach amen yeah reach people yeah praise God okay hallelujah <laughs> we're excited to see what God is doing and I, the thought that came to me was was the the fragrance of Jesus may it permeate every university and college in our country and really around the world may there be a, a just a permeating of of Jesus of the kingdom of God uh, where people will in a sense sense maybe not with their sense of smell but sense with their with their spirit there's something here. There's something to this. And scoffers and people who have not been willing to even think about Christianity will suddenly find themselves very interested in the presence of God. We can pray that way. If, if in the book of Daniel, when Daniel impacted the kingdom of Babylon by, by being true to God, it impacted the king, Nebuchadnezzar, where he made a proclamation about the God that Daniel served and how that all should honor and respect the God of Daniel and also of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the, the Hebrew God. Uh, if God can do it then because of people's righteous living, he can do it today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's pray that way that God use us, use us as salt and light 
and that we continue to operate in the things of the kingdom of God so that it impacts people around us who are not interested in the things of the kingdom of God. Well, we have a, a, a couple of minutes left here, and we're going to get to this. <laughs> yeah. That was a long rabbit trail, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so we are on page 17 of our Daniel Bible study in, in a series Greater Than Gold, and we are at the top of the page. And it says here about Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. Verse 11 refers to the abomination in the temple at the end of the first three and a half years of the tribulation. The three and a half year period following the abomination will be the hardest, most torturous days Israel has ever experienced. The words of verse 7, time, times, and a half, also refer to this second three and a half year period. See Revelations 12, 14. I don't know if you're looking that yeah, up. Yeah, I am. Okay. Revelations. Oh, it just said it. It's been Revelations 12, 14. Okay. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she could fly from the serpent's presence to her place in the wilderness where she was nourished for a time, times, and half a time. Okay. And the woman being basically Israel. That's, okay. that's the metaphor that's given there. Okay. So the exact meaning of the time periods given in verse 11 and 12 of Daniel 11 are uncertain. So question number 12 here says, while the reference to the 1,335 days in verse 12 is unclear, we clearly know that blessed is he that, and according to verse 12, how blessed is he who keeps waiting and attains to the 1,335th day. And so there's, there's a responsibility of waiting and obtaining. And the word there basically means to long, to want, to, to, to wait for, like it says there, and attains. In other words, they, they reach that goal of 300 or 1,335 days. Um, our impatient hearts, would, and I'm reading from the study, would like to know all the answers and therefore eliminate the need to wait on the Lord daily. And I think that's key phrase is we need to hear from the Lord on a daily basis, folks, how important that is. Um, it, as we are waiting on God, we, we need to be careful to not get lackadaisical. Um, I have really tried this year, and so far we've been able to do it. I have tried this year to make sure I read my scriptures every day. And I have Old Testament, Psalms, Proverbs, and the New Testament. And we have a, a daily Bible reading calendar on our church website site at newlifegeneva.com. <laughs> well, yeah, the other was uh, Okay, newlifegeneva.com. And you can go there and there's a daily Bible reading calendar. And I think you can download it. I have it on my, my phone. And so every day my wife and I read through that, sometimes together, sometimes on our own, but we're, we're really striving to try and read it on a daily basis. And, and also to, to encourage times and seasons of prayer where we're seeking the Lord and, and listening to what he has to speak to us. I think that's very important. Well, question number 13, my dear. What assurance was Daniel given in the last verse? Uh, the last verse. So verse 13. 13. But as for you, go your way to the end, then you will enter into rest and rise again for your allotted portion at the end of the age. Okay. Um, so that he would, he would rise to his inheritance at the end of the age. Mm -hmm. But he would also enter into a rest, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what a great promise there is for us as God's people that, that there is a rest that we can enter into in God, a Sabbath rest, the New Testament tells us, even now that we can have a Sabbath rest. And what that means is we do not have to work at our salvation. It is secured for us through what Jesus Christ has done. And there's a place of resting, that Sabbath rest of resting in what God has done with, by his son Jesus Christ 
to secure our salvation. And we are secure in that, folks. We have a promise and a hope. Our job is to, is to continue operating in communication with God, listening to him, reading his word, um, speaking to him, sharing our heart with him, praying, praying for our universities like we've been doing for this revival to spread. Uh, praying for the people of Turkey, praying for the people of Syria that have gone through devastation and uh, hardship and heartbreak, praying for the church that's there, asking God to use the church, and, and sometimes helping to be the answer by supporting the ministries that are there. There are Convoy of Hopes there, Operation Blessing, Samaritan Purse. I know that there's other organizations that are wanting Jesus to be proclaimed in those areas, and they're using the means of uh, provisions to share the, the wonderful news of Jesus Christ with people in Turkey and in Syria. And it's, to me, the president of Turkey opening and saying, yes, we'll take all the help we can get. That's different than a number of years ago when they said, no, we've got this, we'll take care of it. And so God is opening the hearts of presidents, leaders from other nations to say, yes, please come and help us. And in the process of that, the gospel being able to get in and, and to be shared with people uh, in places that they've never been able to before. That's how we can be praying. You know, you said communication, and um, Sunday the Lord had really spoken to me about communication because with our son John going to New Zealand, we didn't hear for him from him for almost a week. We had no communication with him. And uh, the Lord just really... Um, impressed on me he said do you see how um, deadly you're not being in communication can be to your relationship and that's what all of this is about you know God didn't come to make a religion he's not about religion he's about relationship man has made religion but God wants the relationship and he wants to communicate with us and um, communication in any aspect, whether it be with God, with your spouse, with um, your family, with um, people you meet on the street. If you don't have constant communication with those that are close to you, the relationship dies. And that's in, in marriage, that's a, a biggie. You really need to be communicating. And you see where people grow apart because they're not communicating. Well, in the same instance, you need to have that communication with God. Mm -hmm. And God wants to have that communication with you. And um, one of the, I went to look up the, the place where my son is, is at in New Zealand. And they had one speaker about how God is, they were learning that week about how God speaks to you. And I was like, this is really cool because I don't think we really consider how many ways God is trying to talk to us. And we're just not listening. It's sometimes, through. sometimes it can be going in a store, walking by something, and you just get that feeling you're supposed to buy it. It might go, mm. I, I think I'm supposed to go to the clearance section. You go there and you see a bunch of clothing for newborns and there are 50 cents a piece and he said man i can't pass this i i need to buy this and give it to somebody and, or just walking through the grocery section and saying you know i just feel like i'm supposed to pick up another pack of cheese and you do and take it home and later on you find out oh my daughter needed the cheese oh okay or we needed it for because we were running out and 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 god wants us to learn his voice in every situation and, and one of the things that one of the speakers was telling about how, you know, this was that week where they were learning to hear the voice of the Lord and how the kids there were getting really excited because God was speaking to them. He said, you know, it, it happens through the word. It happens through dreams. It happens through uh, visions. It happens through, um, he was just listing different areas people saying something in the Lord, making it live to you. It happens. It, it can be happening in many different ways. And one of the things I was really feeling impressed that he was telling me was that I want to open up the word to people like never before. I want them to see how living it is and how applicable it is. And there are going to be verses and scripture that I'll make come, come alive and say, now this is something that I'm telling you. So you need to receive this. 
If you don't receive it, you can't use the benefits of it. You need to receive this. And as you receive this, it will uh, start to birth life and bring bring something about in your your um, life that will will help you help you through this time it will help you to to see that I'm with you that I'm walking with you and so he wants to he wants to speak to us but we need to have open ears and and as we have open ears he's going to bring understanding with it so he'll give us understanding for verses he may give us and say hey this is for you okay lord i take this for me this is what you're saying to me or he'll he'll just speak a word like when i was um getting ready i was praying about john and and the, the lord told me i want you to give him a word that i go before him i am with him and i'm already there and so i really felt like in that word go before god was wanting me to look up in the bible different words on going before how how he went before so i started to look him up and he gave me 15 verses to give to my son that not only included go before but it, it included i am with you i am going be you know i'm with you i'm going to be there to help i'm going to be taking care of the enemy and and it was like wow i've never seen these before how incredible is this but he was just opening up the word and he said i'm going to give you specific words and if you will start to research it and study it in the bible I'm going to give you the word of God to back it up. It's going to be a confirmation of whatever God speaks to you about. And it was so cool because when John got to the the um, the base there, the one of the superintendent, I don't know what she was, anyway, supervisor, somebody that was in charge, she was speaking to them and she said, God is, has gone before you. He is with you. He is here right now. And I went, <laughs> That's exactly what the Lord gave me to give to him before he left because he wanted it as confirmation that he was with him and he was going to open up the word to him like never before. And God wants to do that with you right now. Amen. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did get we, through we it. We <laughs> taught you a, a Latin term a couple of weeks ago and that is semper ascultatio, which means always listening. And that word listening there means listening, attending, and obeying. And so it's our job to listen and attend to the things we hear and then obey them. So it's, it's, it's semper ascultatio. And uh, we were talking about semper gumby, always flexible. And now God wants us to now be always listening. Uh, you know, seven times... Uh, in the book of Revelation, it says, listen to what the Spirit is speaking to the church. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying and how important that is for us today, the church. Well, let's wrap this thing up, folks. We're, we're coming around third base. <laughs> we're going to make it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, maybe. Uh, as a conclusion, and you know what, Don? Why don't you read that underneath the um, question 13, okay. that sentence. Even though Daniel may not have thoroughly understood every detail, he did know that he was greatly beloved of God and that he had a place waiting for him in the kingdom of God. Amen. It says, as a conclusion to this tremendous book, the book of Daniel, turn to Romans chapter 11, verses 33 through 36, and read the words of praise the Apostle Paul wrote when he was shown, he was shown some of God's great plan of the ages. And so... Romans chapter 11, verse 33 through 36 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! Exclamation point. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. Another exclamation point. For who has known the mind of the Lord or became his counselor? Question mark. Or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him. Again, a question mark. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I was at a pastor's prayer meeting today and we concluded our time of prayer with praying that God would be glorified in all the things that we were praying over. And we were praying specifically for missionaries that were were sent out and we were praying for them for provision and for support and and church planners to be with them. And, and uh, we concluded our time of praying by praying that God would be glorified through all that. So as we finish these last three questions, <laughs> okay, <here. laughs> what did Paul say about God's judgment? Well, he said that they were unsearchable. How unsearchable, this is verse 33 of the second half, how unsearchable are his judgments? And it goes on to question 15. What did it say there? What did Paul say about God's ways? Um, right here. Unfathomable. Yep. They are unscrutable, unscrutable beyond searching, unfathomable, cannot be traced, being fully explored or understood. Now, a fathom is a measurement used in, in uh, boating, and uh, they would measure the depth of water by fathoms. And uh, and send a, a weight with a rope on it, and they would they would measure uh, the distance that they were down. And basically, it's saying they're unfathomable. In other words, uh, his ways are unfathomable. Nobody can measure them. There's no measurement to them. God can do things in ways that he's he's never allowed a man to see, and he does it for a certain person that way. And and we go. Wow, isn't that amazing what God did? I mean, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, nobody had ever seen anybody delivered out of a furnace. But King Nebuchadnezzar did. So there's God's ways are amazing, and I want to challenge you this way. God doesn't have to do it the same way as he did it for somebody else. He can work in a different way for you. Because that's the way God, he's so creative. If God can create snow and not have any snowflake from the time of creation till now be the same, how, how amazing are his ways, folks? They're, they're, they can't be measured whatsoever. Well, let's move on here. One last thing. Okay. <laughs> the other thing that the, the Lord was speaking to me about that was that not one size fits all. That's right. So what happens for somebody else doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen to you in the same way. And so don't see, see it as that way. You know, there are th things that God knows specifically about us. He knows so detailed that he knows what will work for us physically and spiritually and mentally that uh, we can get locked into these formulas. And God is saying, don't put me in a box. Don't put me in a formula because I don't work that way. My ways, you can't measure the many, 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 many ways that I can do something in this situation. So don't put me in a box. Then. So. Amen. And so the last question here is basically to write in your own words and memorize verse 36 of Romans 11. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a, that's a good prayer for us. Uh, you know, is God, uh, everything is from you and we operate in you and everything is to you, to you receive that you would receive the praise and the glory and the honor. That's what we live for. Uh, what a great conclusion to this study in the, in the book of Daniel. Um, and a, a just God allowing us, in a sense, to be able to unlock Daniel's diary and read the notes that he had written down for all of us to be able to read, and that the meaning of these things that Daniel wrote down are being unlocked today by the, the power of the Holy Spirit giving us revelation and understanding in the written Word of God. Folks, we're living at a great, exciting time and uh, there are things that God is doing in our lives today that have not happened in any other generation. And we as God's people need to be most expectant to see a, an amazing move of God in these end times, to not fear it, uh, not, not to be anxious for it. 
Uh, the Bible says, don't be anxious for anything, but in all things with what? Prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep, will guard, will garrison around our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What a perfect promise that is for us today. As we look in the end times, yes, there are unknown things, but not really to the kingdom of God and to God's people. And so as we walk, we can walk in, in peace, in confidence, in knowing that, God, you've got this. We don't understand it, but you do. Praise God. Well, let's close in prayer. <laughs> Father, thank you so much for speaking to us and guiding us today. I pray that our hearts would receive all that you have for us, Holy Spirit. And I pray for your people. Oh, God, bless them and guide them and keep them, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, tonight, Pastor David and I will not be here. Uh, I, I really uh, encourage you to pray for Pastor David. He, he is still getting tired and weary. And with the busy day that there is today, I, I think him taking the night off uh, and not recording today for tomorrow night, which is now today, <laughs> um, <laughs> that he should rest up so that he can get his board meeting that he that he had last night. It's kind of hard talking about things as a past <laughs> thing and it's yeah. yet future for us. Yeah. I guess God does that all the time, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. But we do want to take time to invite you to a service on Sunday. Um, my daughter Dara is going to be sharing a, a, a word that God gave to her last Sunday. It was so wonderful, the presence of God and the moving of God in our in our service. And uh, God spoke in, in a good number of people and and uh, moved in people's hearts. And we had prayer and and uh, just amazing things happened. And so um, David, uh, being led of the Spirit, I believe, asked our Dara, can we hold off on this and have you share it next Sunday? So she agreed to it. I got up and shared from Romans chapter 5, and uh, what I shared was one of the things that God spoke to her in what she was going to share. And so she came up and said, this is part of what I'm going to speak about. And so uh, if you could make it on Sunday, we would love to have you. It's at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we do have ministry to the children at the same time. Uh, it's going to be a great time coming together and allowing God to do what he wants to do. We had a gal that came up towards the end of the service who said, I haven't been in church for 23 years. I grew angry with God because my mother had died and and uh, I haven't talked to God. I haven't, I've not, and she's not been in this church for 23 years. She was a, she was a young person uh, when she was here at that time with her mom. And uh, God began to challenge her and speak to her. She began to listen to our streaming broadcast from Sunday, and she just felt so impressed. She was out delivering her last delivery of the day and pulled in here, came in towards the end of the service, and God really ministered to her, really spoke to her through the last song that we were singing. And she came up to David, Pastor David, and said, could I, could I share? And she was like the last testimony that that was given. And here was this gal who was driving around, making deliveries, felt so impressed to come and be a part because of listening. And uh, God met her and, and helped her uh, just to give her heart back over to the Lord. That's what God's doing in his church today, folks. So come join us 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. And uh, so other than that, do you want to say anything in closing? Uh, the only other thing was we were doing what the scripture says when we come together. <laughs> you know, we're, uh, um, it talks about one has a song, one has a word, one has a... Yeah, scripture. Scripture. Mm -hmm. and, and we were just doing it. <laughs> yeah, we were. It was a very, very beautiful, very wonderful time together. So please join us if you can on Sunday morning. God bless you, folks. Bye-bye.